The Big Sandy Expedition was an early campaign of the American Civil War in Kentucky that began in mid-September 1861 when Union Brig. General William Bowell Nelson received orders to organize a new brigade at Maysville, Kentucky, and conduct an expedition into the Big Sandy Valley region of Eastern Kentucky, and stop the build-up of Confederate forces under Colonel John S. Williams. This was done in three phases. From September 21 to October 20, 1861, Nelson assembled a brigade of 5,500 Union volunteers from Ohio and Kentucky. On October 23, the southern prong secured Hazel Green, and the northern prong West Liberty. The two prongs were consolidated at Saliersville and they began the final phase on October 31. This led to the Battle of Ivy Mountain on November 8, and the withdrawal of Confederate forces from Pikeville on November 9, 1861. During the first week of September 1861, all pretense of neutrality in Kentucky ended when Major General Leonidas Boak ordered Brig. General Gideon Pillow advanced Confederate troops up to Hickman, Kentucky. On September 18, Kentucky legislature approved the introduction of federal troops from outside the state, the pro-Confederate legislators staying away. The next day, Simon Berliver Buckner, former commander of the Kentucky State Guard, established a Confederate headquarters at Bowling Green, Kentucky while troops under Felix K. Zolikoffer seized Barbeville. Shortly afterwards, Zolikoffer arrived at Cumberland Ford with approximately 3,200 men, consisting of four infantry regiments, a field battery of six guns, and four cavalry companies. This posed an imminent threat to Union control of central Kentucky, at a time when increasing numbers of Confederates in the Big Sandy Valley of Eastern Kentucky appeared about to enter the Bluegrass region through McCormack's Gap. In response, Brig. General George H. Thomas ordered troops from Camp Dick Robinson to southeast Kentucky to halt any movement toward Big Hill, Richmond, and Lexington. Former Vice President of the United States John C. Breckenridge and his ally, Colonel Humphrey Marshall, added to Thomas's concerns with a call for peacemen and states' rights men to assemble in Lexington for drill. However, both Brookenridge and Marshall instead rode to Mount Sterling to join the Confederate forces in western Virginia, where Marshall took command of the Army of Eastern Kentucky posted at Byton. Several days later, Bull Nelson publicly announced he had established his headquarters at Camp Kenton near Washington. Kentucky and would arm and equip volunteers, two entries and in Kentucky. The Philadelphia Press wrote that the Big Sandy expedition would prevent the Confederates from taking control of the mouth of the Big Sandy River, where it entered the Ohio River. This would protect the rear and right flank of Brig. General William S. Rosecrans in western Virginia, allowing Nelson to reinforce Wildcat Mountain and to push Zolikoff back to Knoxville. Nelson made Olympia Springs in Bath County the staging area. He named it Camp Gill on honor of Harrison Gill, owner of the renowned spa eight miles south of Owingsville, and 20 miles east of Mount Sterling. The Mount Sterling Pound Gap would run through McCormick's Gap, the gateway to the Bluegrass region from Prestonsburg. On September 29, 1861, Major John Smith Hurt occupied the vital mountain pass with three militia companies. Colonel Lewis Braxton Grigsby added his 300 men to Hertz 200 on October 8. Colonel James Berry V had the 59th Ohio Volunteer Infantry Regiment march to Camp Kenton, and Colonel Leonard A. Harris arrived in Olympian Springs with the 2nd Ohio Volunteer Infantry Regiment. Colonel Jesse S. Norton came forward from Nicholasville with the 21st Ohio Volunteer Infantry Regiment, and during the next two weeks, Nelson's forces grew to about 5,500 men, 3,700 from Ohio and 1,800 from Kentucky. At a farm near Prestonsburg, Confederate Captains Andrew Jackson May and John Ficklin assisted Sarah Gord of John S. Williams with the organization the 5th Kentucky Infantry. The 1,010-man unit was badly clothed some called the hard-nosed group the Ragamuffin Regiment. 
the nine companies of infantry and five mounted companies had two pieces of artillery and they carried an assortment of personal weapons that were ill-suited for warfare.